So now we'll need to transfer the fans and the overflow tank over from the old one over to the new radiator. Everything's held in by 10 millimeter bolts at the top and bottom. So I'm going to remove all this and then put this over on this side right here. So here's a look at the newly assembled radiator with the fan and overflow tank. Now on the old radiator, there's still one more part you need to take out. There's this rubber grommet right here that you need to remove at the bottom and install this onto the vehicle. And there are two of them. There's one more right here. So remove that. So let me show you where you place those rubber grommets. On the passenger side, you put one right at the bottom right here. And then on the driver's side, here's the other one. Here's a look at the assembled radiator with the fan and the overflow tank. So let's install this back in the vehicle. Now one extra step that I'm taking is I placed a piece of cardboard right on this front surface of the radiator so I don't damage any of the fins when I'm reinstalling this. And once this is installed, then I'll remove this cardboard So now we're back underneath the vehicle looking at the bottom of the radiator. Now you want to make sure the plastic peg is seated into the rubber grommet. You can feel it with your finger on both sides. After you check those, then we'll reconnect all the hoses. Again, we have the lower radiator hose, one transmission line here, another one here. And then after those are connected, then bolt the two transmission line brackets back on. Now we can remove the cardboard. Reconnect the two connectors on the fan. Reconnect the upper radiator hose.
reconnect the fan connector, reinstall the hood latch, Don't forget to reconnect the connector for the hood latch. Now reinstall the bracket for the radiator and also for the AC condenser. Here's a passenger side bracket. Now it's time to refill the radiator with the antifreeze. I'll be using the spill free funnel and this comes with many different adapters. Find the one that fits your vehicle. So here I have this one. That fits perfectly. Lock it in place. So secure. Now we'll take the funnel and we'll place it right here. Here I have the Honda Long Life Antifreeze Type 2. This is the blue one. When you fill this you want to go slow so you don't introduce too much air into the system. So that's one gallon. Now I'm going to fill a little bit more so that I can bleed the air easier. And anything extra, I can put it back in the overflow tank so it's not a problem. I should also mention before you fill the radiator, you should also fill up the overflow tank and fill it up to the maximum level. Now squeeze the upper radiator hose a few times to get some of the air out. Now we start the vehicle. And rev the engine to 1500 RPM until the engine is warmed up. When you're warming up the vehicle, make sure you turn the climate control to the low temperature. So after revving it for about 15 minutes, you can see the temperature gauge has risen. Now the engine is nice and warmed up. We'll check the fan to make sure it is on. Now you want to check the fan that's on the driver's side. The fan will come on and off several times. That's normal. But you do want to make sure that it does turn on. So here you can see the air being bled. Also, you can squeeze the upper radiator hose to release some more air. 
Now we'll turn up the temperature on the climate control to hot. And then rev the engine 1500 RPM. And check to see if you have hot air coming out, which I do right now. You also want to turn up the temperature on the rear control because this is a three zone climate control and make sure there's heat coming out from the vents, which I do right now. So we've confirmed we have heat in the vehicle and the engine is not overheating. Check to make sure you don't see any more air coming up on the funnel. And then we know that the system is fully bled. We can go ahead and turn off the engine. With the leftover antifreeze in the funnel, you can take this stop stick that's provided and put it right in the middle. Now keep in mind, this liquid is very hot, so be very careful and we'll slowly lift this off. And then you can dispose this or put this into the overflow tank. Now we'll remove this adapter and install a new radiator cap. Before you put the bumper back on, look underneath and check the three hoses that you reconnected. Make sure you don't see any antifreeze or transmission fluid. Now if you did not use a hose clamp to clamp off the transmission line, you might have lost quite a bit of transmission fluid. So check the level for the transmission fluid. If you need to top it off, then top it off. So now just reinstall the two Phillips screws on the side of the bumper. Reinstall the splash guard underneath and also the plastic cover on the top with all the clips. And that's it. Alright, I finished putting everything back together. And I hope you enjoy watching this video. If you own a Honda Odyssey between the year 2005 to 2010, uh, this video can be helpful if you're replacing your radiator. As for where you can get the radiator and some of the tools I used in this video, I'll put the link in the description below so you can check it out. If you have any questions or comments, leave one in the comments section. And don't forget to click on a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.